Hey guys, welcome to the very first edition of a virtual skill check. So this is where I'm going to be taking a look at um, obviously a tumbling skill, breaking it down, and then providing uh, you know where the corrections lie, where they can uh, you know what drills uh, somebody can use to fix it, and anything else that my eye catches to help you perfect your skills, keep them safe, and obviously compete at the highest level. So I generally do this uh, privately. The reason I haven't you haven't seen content like this before for me is again I do this on the back end privately um, with people who reach out to me or with gyms and things like that. I haven't done it in a while, but this lovely athlete and her uh, mother was uh, willing uh, and they wanted to do this skill check and they were like, "Yep, you know, feel free to make content out of it so that others can learn at the same time." Because I think that's one of the values of this is. You know, I'm sure there's hundreds or even thousands of athletes just like her who are going to be um, needing some help on this. So today we're going to be taking a look at a standing back handspring. Um, obviously, this athlete has been working on it. Um, I don't know too much of the history, but as you can see, she is working on it on air tracks with a barrel at home. So some of the corrections and some of my advice is going to be very different than somebody who is working always in a gym. So either way, let's get started. So first of all, we actually have to look at the skill itself. So we're going to be doing that. So let's take a look what we have. What are we working with here? Oops. Okay. All right. So already I see a couple issues, but we're going to play a little bit more. I know she does another one later. Okay. So let's take a look here. Okay. All right. So that for me, as, as an experienced summon coach, that's enough for me to make uh, a whole basic plan and I also kind of help her out so first things first you know as you guys know if you know me or if you take my clients the first thing we're going to look at are all the shapes right are they is she hitting the ones we're supposed to like what is going on so let's break it down really quick so um her sit position is actually pretty good I do like this for those watching this is the ideal position you want to be for a standing back handspring so uh, let's use a green one here. So as you can see, her body alignment is great. Her chest is leaning forward, but not too much. It is directly over her knees. Her arms are all the way back. They're wound up, ready to go. So if you were to see here, the chest and knees are aligned. What you don't want is the chest too far forward, or you also don't want the chest too far back, right? If the chest is too far down, that's kind of leads to jumping up, which is kind of what we need for a back tuck um, and then if a chest is too tall or too far back so if she was kind of already leaning um, before she has even take done her jump so if she kind of looked like this excuse my drawing here as you know I'm not the greatest artist so if she's kind of was in this position she'd already be falling right and so it kind of messes up your timing so this is good I like this so far so good and then from here now as you can see if you notice her feet she's pretty much elevated here and that's an issue because she is double hopping using the air track instead of her leg strength a standing back handspring is pure leg power right so that's one thing as you can see because of the hop it kind of changes her biomechanics a little bit so this is what we don't want right now um, if you were to see it from the front you would see that her knees were together but her feet are apart so that kind of makes it there's a single point of contact here um, it should be parallel and about I, I would say shoulder width or so shoulder width acceptable any wider, you're kind of losing power. So you kind of want it about shoulder width. You don't want it touching. Like you don't want feet like this. Although aesthetically, that is more pleasing to the eye. And I'm sure for technique scores. But, you know, shoulder width is fine by me. So that's something that she needs to take care of. I would suggest her starting in a sit position, being patient, and then jumping into a handspring just to get rid of the habit. So obviously plenty of other ways. And then from here, um, at this point, we when we take off, I do like the straightness of her legs. Now, what I don't like here, as you can see, the problem is going to be incoming. She's leading with her head, right? So as you can see right here, her head is here, but her arms are back here. Remember, guys, this is called a back hand spring. That means the hand should be leading the way. So ideally, at this point, her arms, if I were to place the green with the blue, should actually be here. Minimum is at the ears. Better is past the ears. So now this tells me either it could be a shoulder mobility issue or it could just be a technique issue. We'll take a look at it. Um, obviously, from a video, I can't tell without assessing the athletes and putting her through some range of motion um, exercises or whatever. But, you know, so far, that is the issue. And then as you can see, sure enough, because of that, 
you can see she kind of lands. In fact, if you were to try this on the floor, she probably would bonk her head on the floor. Yeah, right. So let me break that down really quick and then we'll go over some correction. So here, so we're going. So as you can see, she's leading with the head. Yep, and it stays there. Okay, if, if, if at this point, her arms ended up going past the ears, I'd be okay with that. It would be a little late, but again, I'd be okay with that. So that way, by the time she lands the skill, or at least she makes contact with the floor, her hand should be here and her face should be behind the arms so that there's a contact happening. But as you'll see, you know, that's not what happens. Um, what you'll see from here is her face is here, is in front, and her arms will be here. So there's nothing protecting the face from the floor. Again, she does have enough strength, I'm sure, um, but it is not ideal. So you end up in this situation here. A lot of coaches will say, oh, you know, tighten up your arms or make your arms straighter or become that's, you know, you're not addressing the actual problem at this point. Um, what you're addressing is the symptom. So um, let me just see her finish here. Uh, do not like this finish. Obviously, um, this is not the ideal way to finish, especially your arm position. I would accept a little bit of the knee bend, but at least, you know, you'd want the arms um, nice and straight in front. You want to think about that seven position. So if I were to draw her out, she should look like this at the end right? Her face would be here. Okay, so we want the arms in front, toes uh, in front of her hips. So if these are hips, you want in front of the hips. And we want a little bit of momentum being directed backwards that way, because we're not only trying to do one handspring, we're trying to prepare her so that eventually she can do a another handspring. So for those who know, if this is the center line, toes in front equals a positive angle. There's three angles you got to know, right? So um, now that we know what the handspring looks like and what the issues are, how do we fix it, right? In terms of her shapes, um, I would say she needs to work that bridge shape. So what she would need to do is, I'm gonna make a little um, prescription here. First things, we're gonna work the bridge shape, but we're gonna rock back and forth. So I would have her go into a bridge and rock back and forth so, her, so that she can feel her um, arms and shoulders be behind her ears, if that makes sense. Let me draw it out. I think that'll be a much easier way to do it. So um, if this was her upside down, I would have her go into a bridge and I would make sure that her head position, her nose is that way. I'm gonna draw a big nose just so you guys know which direction this athlete should be facing. So this is the bridge I would um, have her in and I would have her rock back and forth, right? Just to kind of help her feel the open and closing of the shoulders and feel where they should be like. So bridge rockers would definitely be one of the things. And this is great because you can do this at home. You know, you only, I mean, she already has an air track, but I can also see that she has a panel mat right here. So she can just lie down on the panel mat, open it up and go nuts every day. Um, she works it for 30 seconds, even would be tons of help. Second thing um, she should be doing is her jump is actually decent as you guys will see. So let's watch really quick. So when she does take off, can you guys see that distance there, right? From her back to the mat. I mean, that is a good indication that she actually does have pretty good jump power. Now it could be because of the double bounce either way, but I, I'm pretty confident that she has enough height to do a back handspring, at least on an air track, maybe not on floor. Again, I'll have to check, but this is good. So what that means is we need to elevate this mat. This mat is not at an adequate height. In fact, it's not doing her any favors. It's kind of spotting her a little bit. But what I would recommend instead is to stack the two air, air tracks together and then put the mat on top. So it would kind of look like this. You would have, let's say the blue represents the air track. So she has two of them. So I would, uh, I would stack two of them on top of each other. There's one, there's two, and then I would put the air barrel on top of the air track. Now they, we're looking at this in a sideways view. Okay, if that makes sense. So if you know she's not standing on air track, so from the top down, if you were to look at it, it would kind of look like this. So you have those two large air tracks on top of each other. I'm going to make this 3D. So that kind of makes sense. So you have two air tracks on top of each other. And then um, we have the barrel. Again, we're looking at it from the top. So it would kind of look like this. Oops, actually, that's not correct. Let me redraw that. So we have the two air tracks stacked on top of each other. There's one. And then we have another one. Right, so we have two of them. And then you want the barrel to actually be like this. Okay, again, I'm exaggerating. And then she is actually gonna stand on the grass or the floor. 
from here, jump on top of the barrel and then lands on the other side. So this will give her enough elevation because I feel like these two things, if you were to add them up, would equal about the same height as her lower back here. So that'll give us give her enough height. So if you look to your right over here, you'll see um, the drill I'm going to show you here. If you look over here. Um, so if I were to play this, by the way, you can find this on my website. Um, if you go to tumblingcoach.com, it's the standing back handspring guide. It's completely free. So here's a drill I would do. And this is a very similar setup. As you can see, I've elevated the surface for the athlete because she has the same issue. She needed to jump or she needed equipment that would match her jump. So let's watch. Okay. And as you can see, when she jumps, her arms lead the way, right? When she lands, her arms are slightly behind her ears. It's not her head leading the way. I know the barrel kind of blocks it a little bit, but you can see a vast difference. Um, it would also benefit her to start this way because she already has jump height. Now, when it comes to arms starting up or in front, doesn't really matter. Um, you choose depending on the athlete, what they needs for her. I would actually have her start arms in front and then whip them back. So there's another drill that she can do. Um, let's pause that one. So another one that I would like her to probably work on is a drill that looks like this. So she would have to put her air barrel near a wall, um, obviously a wall that won't break <laughs> and is stable, but basically a drill that looks like this. Okay, so notice how it's really forcing the athlete to reach back, open the shoulders, and then pop off. She needs this drill quite a bit. So you know, hun you know, hundreds of reps, if you can do like 10, 20 a day with, with tightness and feet together, that would be awesome, right? Um, and then obviously her snap down needs a lot of work. So a, an actual handstand snap down would be extremely ideal. I'm going to show you what a good handstand snap down looks like. Okay. So on the, on the right, you'll see, um, a handstand snap down. Notice how number one, it's away from the wall that allows the athlete to actually have an arch to make it a little bit more realistic. So as you'll see, she'll open her shoulders, right? Squeeze her hips, toes, and then she comes down. Now I have this athlete coming down in front support, which what I would suggest for her. Uh, because her uh, finish of the handspring, you know, she just has a lot of bad habits. So for her, I would ideally like her to finish in front support. Then when she gets good at it, she can actually complete the snap down in a more aggressive manner and then actually stand up. So let's finish this prescription here. So we have the bridge rockers is number one. Number two, elevate, ele elevate, elevate, <laughs> elevate the, um, I won't say boulder, but air barrel, whatever you want to call it, right? You guys understand. Okay. Number three, she needs to work open shoulders. Okay, so you can do the roll uh, back type of drill, right? So uh, I call it shoulder pop, but you can call it like, you know, let's just call it backward shoulder pop. So I update the names of my stuff all the time, depending on what's easier. So, so we have bridge rockers, we have elevate the boulder. Uh, she needs to open her shoulders by working backward shoulder pops. Another way to open the shoulders, right, would be um, to work that proper, can't emphasize that enough. Now, handstand snap down is one of my 12 fundamental movements. Um, if you want to know all 12 and what they are and you want more information, I have a complete a online um, virtual clinic that you can get. And I'll put up all the resources at the end of this presentation. But just know that if you want to know all of them, you can. But for now, you know, that video should be good. Um, and then finally, when she works the snap down, I would also have her continue to work all 12 shapes. Let's just keep it consistent. So things like, you know, solid handstands and things like that. Um, hollow position is another key one. Um, I think at this point, this athlete is kind of doing her skills um, and kind of just throwing it over, um, which is not bad. You know, I admire anybody who wants to work their skills and get better. But at this point, you know, there are certain things that she would have to do in order to improve this. And then once I see these things get fixed using equipment um, and because she already jumping high enough, um, she would be ready for a adequate spot from an actual coach. Um, obviously no parent listening, unless you're an actual coach, don't be spotting your kids. I highly do not recommend unless you have been trained by a coach or, you know, you're strong enough to save them again, that's your discretion. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys found this valuable. Um, and if you're interested in your own, um, skill check, you can visit my website. Um, you can find it right over here. So you can go to Okay, so that's the website you want to go to tumblingcoach.com slash skill check. Maybe I can write it somewhere what's a little bit more visible. Give me one second.
Okay, so I, I, I'm sure you guys get it. So tellmecoach.com slash skill check is where you can go and apply to get your own um, skills checked. Um, there is a small fee. I, I only do these public ones once in a while. I'll probably, I'll probably be doing a couple more in the future. Um, so if you want yours uh, to be publicly available and you don't really care, that's fine. But 80 to 90% of people just want it private. They want me to look at their stuff, give them corrections, give them a little plan, and then off they go. So that's about it. Um, hope to see you guys around. Keep tumbling. Uh, you know, stay strong, eat well, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.